Welcome to episode 26 of Regen Rovers. It's the end of the third season of the series, so it's time to do another review. Now then, the first thing you may have noticed is that it looks rather different, the game now. I've installed a new skin, the Vitrex skin, which I was using last year on FM16, has come out on FM17 as well. So thank you to the guy that makes these, they're, they're fabulous. Everyone seemed to love it on FM16, so I thought I'd give it a try on FM17. It looks nice, I really like the look of it. You can see the, the player screen is different. You've got a bigger face here, which is good, because we want to get to know the players personally with the small little cramped face in the corner. You can't see them as well. So I think that's quite important, actually, having a nice big regen face there so we can see who they are. He's tried to cram as much as possible onto this screen by the looks of it. It's nice. Uh, I like it. I suppose you can let me know in the comments section, but last year the feedback was very good on this skin. Everyone was asking me, pretty much every video, someone was asking me, what skin is it? And um, I had to, <laughs> to direct them. It was the link that I shared around the most last year. So I've put a link in the description below for this skin as well if you want to download it and use it yourself. Now I'm going to turn my face off as usual, that's what I tend to do with these reviews, so we can just have a look at everything in more detail. First of all, this is the best overall 11 for the club so far in our history. So you've got the, I don't know if this is overall appearances or just the league appearances. Let's just check, Liam Simmons. So he's 114 league appearances. So I think it is overall appearances actually. So you can see that Jack Young has made the most appearances for the club, 138 games, 54 goals in those three seasons. Dion Mills is second with 129 appearances and 15 goals. Average rating-wise, it is actually Jack Young, isn't it? Apart from the players on the bench. But there's a few players this season that have managed to make it onto the bench. Adam Fox made 45 appearances for the club this year. And he has been fantastic, I must say. The likes of Alfie Doddington still on there. He's at Grey's Athletic still. And having a dreadful season this year. 6.23 average rating, that is disastrous from Alfie Doddington. What has happened to him? Yadom's still on there, Will Carter is still on there at left back, despite the fact that he's only really played in that first season. And it's still got the original formation that I used, the strikerless thing. Moving on then, the Player of the Year award, Fans Player of the Year award, has gone to Jack Young once again. I don't know what's happening to his attributes here. Everything is going down, which is a little bit irritating. It takes a little bit getting used to this skin, but after a while you grow to love it because it's got everything there that you want on that screen. Sensational season from him again. 21 goals, just one off last year's total. Average rating wasn't as strong as last year. 6.91 overall. 21 goals, 5 assists. He didn't uh, Six man of the matches as well. Passing completion rate, 81%. Not too bad for a player that's only got four on passing. The second best player was Adam Fox, who we've already looked at at the start. But it, uh, I've really enjoyed his performances at the back. He has been our best defender. Easily been our best defender. Let me know in the comment section below. Who is your player of the third season? Is it Jack Young again? Is it Adam Fox? Is it someone else? Let me know. Grant War was third choice, despite the fact he shared the goalkeeping position with Stephen Bradley, who had a good season as well, and also towards the end of the season, last four games, we saw Siv Zellis come into the team, of course. Grant Wall managed to get um, two goals again this year. It's not showing on here, it's got clean sheets and... Oh, there's two goals, there we go. He got four clean sheets, which isn't amazing. Conceded 27 goals in 23 appearances. That's not too bad at all, actually. Let's just have a... Let's just compare that to Stephen Bradley, who got six six clean sheets, that's more, 30 goals conceded, a few more conceded. But Siv Zellis, in the last four games, he only conceded four goals in seven games, and he managed to get four, three clean sheets. Wait, what's, oh, it's adding on the under-23s games. Okay, he conceded one goal in four games, that's better, and he managed to get three clean sheets. This guy surely will be number one next year for those, appear those those performances. Really good. He's got really orange eyes there, I think. 
Sivzelis. He's got a unique name as well, hasn't he? Goal of the season. Let's have a look at this then. So this was goal of the season for us. Oh, I remember this now. Berry running around that defender and slamming it into the corner. Lovely goal. I'm not sure if it's the best goal of the season. I don't know if I'm going to do a special video this at the end of this season. I don't think I have a huge amount of time to do that, to be honest. I mean, I could do Jack Young's 21 goals this season, but that would just be the same as last year. So I don't think I'll do that. Lee Sivzelis, signing of the season. He only came in at the end of the season and he is considered a signing of the season. Stats-wise, top goal scorer, Jack Young. Highest average rating, Adam Fox. Top most assists, Leon Woodland. Very good season of him as well. Dan Ormsby managed to get the best pass completion, that is random. Jack Young, most man of the matches, and Gareth Sheriff with another 15 yellow cards once again. Is that the third season in a row? Last year he got, first year he got 12. Last year he got, oh it's not showing them, we definitely got 15 because he got suspended for the end of the season. For three matches at the end of the season, I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't know what to do about Gareth Sheriff. He's been solid, but not spectacular. If I can find a better defensive midfielder, then I have to put him in. To be honest, if I can find a better player for any position, then I have to put them in. Because I have to always be, improve, be improving the squad, don't I? This is the season review. So we, we lost in the third qualifying round of the FA Cup. Lost in the second round of the FA Trophy. Better than last season. 13th finish in the Vanarama National League. We'll have a look to see who wins the playoff final today as well between Hampton and Richmond and Basingstoke. But 13th finish, 12 wins, 20 draws, 10 defeats, plus one goal difference, 56 points. Some of you might be thinking, ah, oh, it's just going to get say we were going to finish mid-table every year. But we have made progress every year. So do not fear. Paul is here. <laughs> we're going to improve Region Rovers every year. 19th in that first season. Just surviving, of course. 15th last year and 13th this year and every year we've got more points so even if we finish 11th next year as long as we're making progress eventually we will get into those playoff places I think baby steps at the moment little baby steps eventually it will come good if we have a look at the stats you can see at the moment nine games unbeaten in the league only Gosport have got a be better record than us player let's look at, have a look at the player overview uh, Jack Young didn't feature on that list this year, unfortunately, but he's only just off it, I think. Gareth Sheriff, the, uh, the joint most yellow cards, he's the only player to feature on the player statistics. We managed to get an average attendance of 455, which is only 7% of the Crawley Stadium capacity, so it's not the best. Uh, match of the season was the 3 0 win against Constonian. And the moment to forget was that dreadful 3-0 defeat against Dartford where he scored two own goals. So end of season team meeting. Everyone's unhappy with training apparently. I don't have a fitness coach and I'm not allowed any more coaches. I've gone to Eddie Mitchell, the chairman, and asked for another coach and I can't get one. So a lot of the co coach contracts are running out. I've signed everyone up that I really want to sign. But I might look for a coach that can do fitness and something else. What should we aim for next year then? Mid table or are we going to is it gonna be a relegation battle again? I think if I go for mid table they will get upset. But I'm gonna say it anyway. And they're happy. Oh, good. Well done. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm sort of semi surprised that I've picked the right option there. I don't know how big of an impact that actually has on your next season's performance. I feel it's a little bit important because the players have gone into the closed season with, well, full of confidence. This is the board overview. Job security, the, the overall leadership is very, they're very pleased with me, which is good. End of season scouting report. These are players I should be signing apparently, but he's not a region, but Chris Ball is. I'm going to be scouting around a lot in pre-season to try and improve the team as much as possible. It really is important. Pre-season, we'll start five weeks before as usual. So let's look at the squad then. We've already had a look at a few things, but you can see average rating-wise, Siv Zellis in those four games got a 7.03 average rating. He looks like he could be a special keeper for us. But we've got a lot of keepers at the club. I'll go through the under-23s and under-18s as well. But you'll see that there's so many keepers. And they're all similar ages, really, aren't they? Um, there's a few players that are 20 years old now. And there's only a couple players that are 18 in 
the first team. Everyone else is 19. So goals-wise, Jack Young, top scorer, 21 goals. Bradley Berry of 14 had a, a great first season for the club as well. Hoping to improve upon that next year. He was just hindered by injury at the end. Paul Latham, eight goals. Our third choice striker managed to get a few goals in his first season for the club as well. He's our target man. Seems to be quite effective when we need him to be. Dion Mills was a fourth top goal scorer, three goals then, a couple for War, Woodland and Fox, then Ormsby, Wilson, Harrison Lane and Howcroft got one goal each. We didn't really score as many goals, well we definitely didn't score as many goals as last year, but defensively we were so much more solid in the second half of the season. Last year it was all about scoring goals in the second half of the season, this year it was all about stopping goals from being scored against us, so it was a complete opposite of last season really. Assist wise Woodland was top with 10 assists. Really good season for him. 6.86 average rating as well. Dion Mills was second with 7. Bradley Berry got 6 and Jack Young got 5. Sparks did actually get quite a few assists in the first half of the season when he was playing but he didn't fit into our wing back system in the second half of the season so he didn't really play. Same with Leon Thompson as well. Don't really know what's going to happen to these wingers. I'm training Thompson up to be a box-to-box -box midfielder. Whether it will work, I don't know. Probably not, but I just feel like we need to try and stick him around. He is the first player out of our youth intake that broke into... Well, the only player that's broken into the first team. Average rating-wise, you can see Dan Ormsby just... It didn't work out for him in the first team this year, but he did have a good season in the under-23s. Dr. Jones, not so good either in the, the games he did play. Liam Simmons, I just, I still don't understand what is up with Liam Simmons. Club captain, and he's just not performing for us. And I, I suppose lack of composure hinders any skill element to his game. That could get in the way, maybe, but composure's more important for a striker, I find. <laughs> he, th he thought pre-season was scheduled too early. Well, screw you. Consistency, that's the, that's a, that is the biggest problem, I think. And apparently selfish as well, he's very one-footed, so I don't know. There's quite a few positives to him, though. Hmm. We'll have to see what happens in the fourth season, but he might have his place taken away from him by a different defender if he doesn't perform. Moving on to the under-23s, then, we've got a huge number of players in here. I will be releasing quite a few of them. You'll notice with the, the new skin that rather than greyed out players it's just a light yellow so don't get too confused there those are basically the old greyed out stars one of which is uh jake robinson our most recent decent youth intake prospect with 10 on passing 16 on aggression matthew cash is one that's been around a while now 19 years old i've always I've kept him simply because he's got 12 on passing 15 on teamwork as well. I, I don't think he's going to go anywhere though, so I think I will have to release him. The other the other players with sort of greyed out play, uh, stars, Callum Davis, who had a, a short spell scoring plenty of goals for the under 18s and under 23s, but didn't really progress. He scored three goals last year for the first team, but then dipped and his goal scoring run ended. He only actually scored three goals this year in non competitive games didn't really play very much. It was all down to Gareth Pointing and Dan Ormsby. We can't actually see Dan Ormsby's record now. He did have loads of goals for the under-23s. Yeah, there we go, 15 goals in non-competitive non games. And Pointing, likewise, 17 goals across the under-23s and under-18s. Uh, under the other striker in the, the under-23s, Codder Todd. <sighs> Not a very good season for him. Two goals under 23 level considering I was hoping he'd be a first team player last year he only scored one goal it's not worked out for him he's he's just pretty atrocious to be honest pointing and Sam Palmer got six assists each in I don't know whether this is a, I think this is across under 23s and under 18s because pointing started off in the under 18s this season but Palmer's another player that I thought could be decent and isn't really progressing his position has been taken away, but I am training him up as a wing back, so perhaps he could be a backup wing back for us. I don't know how Gareth Boynton scored so many goals, really. It just doesn't look good enough, but there we go. The ginger haired maestro. Under 18s wise, lots of players in here, thanks to all the new, th new youth recruits that have come in. All of these 16 year olds are youth recruits. So I don't know if any of them are really going to turn into anything. Ben Smith's got three goals in four games. He's quite a versatile character, as you can see there. Um, but yeah, Gareth Pointing is on this list as well. Now, Jason Love 
one of our youth recruits just came to life recently in an incredible game. If we just go to under 18 fixtures in the most recent game, he scored five goals against Hampton and Richmond under 18s. <laughs> But he's not really anything special. He's a right winger. He's got a little bit of pace and acceleration. Okay dribbling and crossing. And only half a star potential apparently. So I don't think he's really going to turn into anything. However, that's just boosted his average rating to a ridiculous high. Darren Baker as well. Pretty good average rating. So as always, I will be keeping an eye on the under 23s and under 18s to see how they're getting on. Finances of the club are very healthy. Thanks to our very generous chairman. In his first season with the club, I guess he was just reluctant to give us any money. But this year, he's just been investing heavily in the club. And we've got a balance of £272,435. I've actually got money to spend this year. And I kind of feel I should spend it. If he's given me the money, let's go for it. Let's spend some money on some regens, some good regens at this le for this level. And then push on and go aim for the playoffs next year. I don't see any reason why not to, especially with this tactic that is very solid. Just decided to inject 60 grand more into the club. Oh, wait. I continued one day. Suddenly, all our money goes. What? Oh, ground maintenance. So, we've already talked... Oh, so now the work has actually started on the training facility. Oh, the youth facilities have been scrapped. Great. Hmm... But he is going ahead with the training facility at the moment. That's annoying. We need better youth facilities. We're regen rovers, for goodness sakes. We're going to request, request improved youth category. Uh, so the finances have suddenly... I've continued one day and they've gone to pot. Well, there we go. I mean, they're not awful, but it is weird how they suddenly vanished. It's the ground maintenance. I suppose they're having to... How, why are we maintaining the ground? It's Crawley Stadium. I'm just... I've scouted quite a few players. I'm having a look at players already. That's possible signings. Max Stevens could be a right wing back, I guess, for us. But I don't feel he's better than what we have. I need to be signing players that are better than what we have now. Because there's no point signing all these players that possibly could turn into something. This is the fourth time that the board have failed to find an affiliate for the club. Are we ever going to find an affiliate? Is it because I'm a, a creator club team and it's not possible to find an affiliate? Maybe. I, it's pretty irritating though. Duan Easthope. He looks quite good actually. You'll notice with the new skin the uh, attribute colours have changed again. I can change them if you'd like but I, don't know, I suppose the green colours do fit in with regen rovers anyway don't they? And you can quite clearly see, it's highlighted all the things that are important for a centre-back role. And apart from the concentration thing does let him down, and concentration is important, I find. I don't think I'm going to go for him. The skin just makes it seem so much cleaner, I find. You look at the play, it just looks clean. The, the face is clean. It's, it stands out. It's really nice. Just offering a new contract to Charlie Lofts. I want to keep him around definitely for the next year to see how he goes, but I need to remove some of these things. He's, either he's going to be an expensive player. £200 a week, that's okay. I'm happy with that. Let's just reduce a few things. Uh, let's put that down and go for this. He really wants an appearance fee as well as this. Come on, accept this, Charlie. There we go. He's a good player. A lot of you seem to like him on Twitter when I posted him on the Regen Rovers Twitter page. Because overall, he's not he's decent at everything. Heading could be improved. But physically, he's alright, isn't he? Now, this is a player I really would love. However, I don't think he'd want to come. He's, <laughs> he's at Wolves. Maybe I could get him on loan next year. No, not at the moment. I definitely will be looking at the loan market once again. Maybe because we, we played pretty well last year will be able to get some players on loan. Like this guy, Daryl Hornby, as a striker. Really good player. His contract is running out at the end of June. Interesting. They want £2.9 million from him. He's obviously... Oh, wait, he's at Brighton. He's not at Aldershot Town. Yeah, he's on loan from Brighton. But his contract's running out. Will he sign anyone? He, he won't come to me. No chance. Let's play a final day. I'm just continuing to find out who wins. And it's Hampton and Richmond Borough. And for that reason, I'm going to do a special Paul's Big Day Out for you. Yep, I went for Hampton. Hampton Court 
to be precise. Hampton Court Palace. I'd recommend going there. It's a, a wonderful place to visit. I, I'm surprised I haven't done it yet, really, because I have played Hampton and Richmond a few times. But I thought I was just saving it up because I don't want to run out of pool big days out. But because they're going up a division and we're not going to be playing them next year, I think it's only fair to do. I could also do Richmond at some point as well because I've been there a few times. Daniel Carr deservedly won player of the season. I voted for him actually. 22 goals, 10 assists. He scored a couple against me I think. And am I nominated for... Yes I am. I'm nominated for manager of the season again. Points wise, I'm not going to win am I? 156 points. I'm going to vote for the Maidenhead guy because it gives me more, me more chance of a 28% win ratio. It's just pretty awful, really, isn't it? New sponsorship deals announced, so that will help with the finances, I guess. I just don't understand that ground maintenance. Do we? Do, why do we have to? I suppose we have to contribute to the ground maintenance for Crawley. I suppose that is fair. Anyway, let's have a look then at the other divisions in a little bit more detail. So our division, Ebbsfleet and Hampton and Richmond, deservedly promoted. Concord Rangers, East Thurrock United and Dorchester Town relegated. National League North then was won by Fylde, AFC Fylde and Harrogate Town were promoted via the playoffs. Salford just missing out, pretty unlucky there. Alfreton, Bradford Park Avenue and Bishop Stortford relegated. So they were moved across to the North Division, remember? They had had a couple of decent seasons in the South and now they've been relegated from the north. Interesting. The other team that was moved across, St Albans City. Comfortable season for them. Moving up to the proper conference. Uh, we haven't had the playoff final yet. But Barnet won the league 90 points. Barry versus Morecambe in the playoff final. Coming down. North, it was a very tight division as you can see there. But North Ferriby, Chelmsford City are coming back down to the Southern League. Southport and Halifax Town relegated. Uh, we'll have to, uh, there might be a few movements across the two different divisions. But we're going to have to face our bogey team Chelmsford again next year. League 2, Swindon, Colchester and Doncaster have been promoted so far. Accrington, Stanley and Eastley relegated back down to the conference. League 1 was won by Walsall, just about beating Birmingham City to the title. A Scunthorpe, Carlisle, Oxford United and Fleetwood relegated. The Championship, Everton won it, uh, just ahead of Southampton, who finished second. Uh, Rotherham, Milton Keynes and Charlton relegated from the Championship. And the Premier League, there's still one game to go. It's a three-horse race between Arsenal, Liverpool and Man City. Hull and Derby have definitely been relegated, but it's between Middlesbrough, Stoke... Norwich, Burnley and even Bournemouth and Newcastle are still in the trouble. Wow, that is a really interesting relegation battle there. So thank you for watching season three of Regen Rovers. We have survived again comfortably this year in mid-table. Next year, as I said, I'm aiming for better. Depending on who we sign in the summer, uh, that's how I will make my decision as to where we should be finishing next year realistically mid-table but if we can improve the squad and find some better players spend some of that money that the board have given me then maybe we can push for the playoffs the tactics stable now we're defensively solid we've got a decent new goalkeeper and a great defender in adam fox if we can build our team around these players then we can aim high so now hit that like button let me know who was your player of the season in the comment section below the next episode haven't quite decided what it will be, whether it will be a pre-season video where I show off the new kits again, or whether it will just be the first day of the next of the fourth season with me showing off the new kits. Haven't completely decided. Either way, that will definitely be episode 27. Until next time, guys, enjoy Football Manager 2017. I will see you very soon. Yeah.